Hi everyone and welcome back. So today this little project uh, is going to be for a friend of my father's. He had uh, some old lawnmower blades that were worn out and he could not get replacements for them. Uh, all of the new ones, even though he could get the, the right size and, and shape and everything, they didn't have the right mounting holes. So what you can see me here doing is taking the old mower blade and uh, I just put a piece of tape on it and found the center of the existing mounting hole in the old one just so I could center up my trace. So once I do that and I get everything aligned, I just make sure that it stays in place, peel the tape off, and then I go around and try to trace the hole. Um, so in this case, because the hole was sort of worn and wasn't exact, I didn't really like the trace that I came out with. Um, unless you're going to go along in, you know, one millimeter or half millimeter increments, you know, you're not going to get, probably not going to get a perfect trace uh, when you have a bunch of curves and things like that. So I abandoned that idea and it literally took me all of five minutes to get Fusion 360 started up to model the shape out and to export the G-code and have it on a USB stick. So in this case, it was a much better option. But we will cover in a future video um, useful aspects of the simple trace and you know times when it is good to use it. But in this case, it was just quicker and easier to pop into Fusion and, and draw it up. So you can see me cutting the first blade here. And the thing that I will highlight that's critical, um, and you'll see me more here with the second blade, is that you have to make sure that your blade is going to be sitting flat if you want a square hole. You don't want bevels on the edges, and you can see me lining it up with the level. And I had reconfigured some of my slats so that it would fit. And the top rail of my table, um, the outer periphery that sits onto the, the tub there, um, I do know that that's square, so I can use that as a square point and line, line that up to the outer periphery and then I can line the blade up to that to know that I'm square and the two flat edges that are in that mounting hole are going to be aligned properly to that blade. And then it just sort of worked out that this uh, one millimeter nozzle, the bevel that's on the outside, um, it would fit down in and center itself perfectly in the existing hole that was there on the blade. So that worked out really well. I could use the center as my zero point and have it cut exactly where I need it to and be all aligned. And as with all of this stuff, the more time you take during your setup, uh, the better your results are going to be. And when it comes to doing this stuff, I like to do a practice run before I do the final cut because you only get one shot. And as you can see here, it came out pretty much perfect. That's without any cleanup. And that one little little tiny bit of dross that's on the, the back there, that just uh, brushed off, no problem. So, And I heard back and uh, they fit up perfect. The mounting hole was exactly the right size, no, no more filing or anything needed. So then we're on to some wire holder brackets that I need to make uh, for my wire spools that go above my, my workbench when I'm doing all my electronic stuff. Uh, I needed a couple brackets um, to be able to hang some wire spools up there so that they're easier to get to. So that's this cut. And those that are keen will notice that the holes when it cut um, I, I did two files. Uh, I, I mirrored it in Fusion 360, and actually, when I did the cuts for my uh, mounting holes, I actually had the the pierce on the the wrong side of the hole, so it it, uh, it did its lead-ins into the part, which isn't a big deal for this piece. But I did end up changing that, so any future ones uh, will cut the proper with the proper lead-in. And so this is 14 gauge material. Um, I cut that outline at 1500 millimeters a minute. And you know, they clean up super easy. And the good thing about doing this with the relief cuts, 
um, doing them in your drawing is that uh, you can just throw it into the vise and just bend it by hand very easily. If you leave five to seven millimeter tabs, um, you know, they're fairly easy to bend. And so I'm just going to finish these out and just going to weld up those corners and uh, I ended up powder coating these black and then uh, we'll hang them and that'll be it for this video. So thank you for watching everybody and we'll see you all next time.